In this video, I'll share some important techniques that I've learned while trying to achieve layer adhesion and quality parts in ABS and ASA. When it comes to these materials, layer adhesion is the hardest thing to achieve and one of the most important factors for successful and strong prints. I'll share what I wish I knew before spending hundreds of hours printing the same part over and over again, playing around with different settings and not seeing any differences. I'll explain exactly what layer adhesion is, how it works and share some lesser known techniques that will make a huge difference in your 3D printing journey. So why print ASA and ABS in the first place? Well, if you're printing functional parts, you can't risk them melting in the sun or in your car. So that gives you a few different options for materials. ASA and ABS offer some useful properties. It's lightweight, it prints relatively quickly, it's heat resistant and actually quite impact resistant. So let's start off with the basics. Some of the absolute non-negotial requirements for printing with this material is having a heated chamber. Guess what? You're not going to be able to print it properly with your bamboo labs, your K1 Maxes, and all those non-heated chamber enclosed printers. You really need that heat to make the plastic fuse to itself. Second, ABS does actually absorb moisture, not as quickly as your PETG, so it's a good idea to dry your filament and print out of a filament dryer. Third is you need to turn off part cooling. You can't risk the fan cooling down the previous layer too quickly and ruining the layer adhesion. Okay guys, so first of all, do yourself a favor and just use Orca Slicer. It's the only thing that's gonna give you the exact control that you need over your settings and G-code to be able to do stuff like this. So I use a Chidi Plus 4 with the chamber temperature pumped up to the absolute maximum, which is 65 degrees Celsius, a heated bed temperature of 110, just to give that extra heat boost. Just make sure your volumetric speed is as high as possible because we'll adjust the actual print speed in different settings. The core principle is that you want each layer to take as little time as possible so that plastic is deposited onto plastic that's still hot while still maintaining its shape. If your print speed is too slow and the layer is a kilometer long, by the time the print head comes around to the start of the next layer, the plastic will be cold and the bond won't be as strong. If the speed is too fast, the previous layer will be too sloppy and you won't get a high quality print you need to find the sweet spot based on the model's geometry. Different models might need different layer times. First, set your overall print speed to something relatively high in the speed tab. If you have a large model, you want the supports to print as quick as possible to avoid wasting layer time. Supports don't need to be the same quality as the main model. Next, we need to throttle the layer time in the filament settings under the cooling tab. For this particular model with large overhangs, I've found 60 second layer time works fine. This means if a layer takes too long, the printer will speed up to a maximum of 90 millimeters a second, which is what we set earlier, to hit that 60 second target. If it's a small layer, the printer will slow down to make sure the layer takes at least 60 seconds. You want every layer to be as consistent as possible to that 60 seconds, which means your print speed will vary throughout the model. You can check the print speed and layer time for each layer in the visualizer tab in the top right. So if we put it into speed view, we can see that the slicer automatically throttles and accelerates the print speed and prints the model at different speeds at different parts of the model in order to achieve that 60 second layer time.